guys, I'm just going to give you a little recap on my Air Force MEPS experience so that you might know what you have to look forward to. And um, just as a little refresher, go back to my first MEPS video on how I messed up MEPS. That was the whole testing portion of it. So this time I went to MEPS just for the physical, which means I got the hotel that I didn't have to pay for this time. And um, so my recruiter told me, hey, you're going to MEPS. I've got the dates picked out for you. Or like he asked when I would be available to go. And I told him and it was like a week from whenever he told me I could go. So um, yeah, I had to request off from work um, three days in advance. And, or I had to request off from work for three days. I requested off one day just for the drive down there. I mean, it's like an hour away, so it wasn't like tragic or anything, but I just had so much to do. Um, and to just be in the hotel by at least 7 p.m. So I requested off for that day. I requested off for the day of MEPS and then the day after just because I've been traveling nonstop and I need a rest day, especially after going through all that. So anyhow, um, I drive down to Knox Knoxville. Yeah, I drive down to Knoxville, which is where my MEPS is in Tennessee because I live in Greenville, Tennessee, which is an hour away from there. And um, I had some errands to do first. I ran around and uh, I got my car worked on a good bit. So that's always fun. And I just had to be in the hotel by 7 p.m. So I got there at six, an hour before my deadline. And um, I was told that I was gonna have a roommate and that I wouldn't know who it was or what branch they were in, but that I would have a female roommate. So I walk in, um, the hotel actually has a private lounge. I don't know if all of them will, but this one had a private lounge for MEPS um, participants. Um, so I walked in and there was this older gentleman sitting at a desk and he saw me walking in and he was like, oh, I've been waiting for you. And I was just like, awesome. I hope that I didn't make you wait too long. And he was like, no, it was my pleasure. And I was just like, that's so sweet. So I walk up to him and he gives me the whole rundown on how the hotel situation will work because that was all that he was over with MEPS. So he, um, he gave me a pamphlet and it didn't say breakfast anywhere on it. It was just like a pamphlet, like with some guidelines, actually. I have it here somewhere. Um, it just had, actually, no, I don't because I had to turn it in. Yeah. Um, okay. So it had like guidelines and stuff, but it didn't say breakfast on it. He just said, you'll need this whenever you go to breakfast, um, the next morning, because even though, you know, there's going to be a bunch of kids lined up outside of the restaurant that's in the hotel by like 5 a.m., you know, they still have to verify that you're you. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so he gave me the pamphlet for breakfast. He gave me a ticket to give to the people at the restaurant for dinner. Um, and that I just had to eat dinner by at least um, 10 o'clock because I had to be in my room by 10 or 11. It was either 10 or 11. Um, but I think they stopped serving dinner at 10. So I had to be at dinner by 10 and give them a little ticket and he gave me a coin so that I wouldn't have to pay for parking. So that's pretty nice. Um, he said that all the girls were on floor number three and all the boys were on floor number five. So two separate floors completely. And um, he said that I was welcome to the hotel. I could do anything I wanted in there, but if I left the hotel, I'd have to sign a sign in and sign out sheet with um, just like my name and the time that I get there and everything in case of emergencies and they need to hunt people down. So um, yeah, it was really laid back, but I was extremely tired. So I just went straight to the hotel room. I, um, I settled in, I finished my job picking out because I, um, I'm st I was still kind of iffy on the like 12 jobs that I had to pick out. So I sat down for, and I like, I spent like two hours. I mean, I was doing other things during the two hours, but I spent like two hours trying to like figure out all the jobs and look into the jobs and make sure it's really what I wanted because I was under the impression that like, I may be picking out like, my job tomorrow that I want for the rest of like four years so I was kind of stressed um anyways there was a meeting in the hotel in the MEPS lounge at 8 30 um just to do a head count and make sure everyone was up to date and we had to watch like a little short video but I um seven o'clock rolled around which is like the deadline for you to be in the bedroom and everything you know or like the deadline for you to check in to the hotel and I was like, well, I'm still here and I don't have a roommate yet. Wonder if like, I just assumed that my roommate was running really late or that she'd already checked in, but she just wasn't in the room. And I could hear girls laughing like in the room next to me. So I was like, maybe she knows someone and she's uh, just hanging out with them. Like I'm gonna try not to act offended because I was really wanting a roommate just so that I could um, meet someone and kind of have someone to like, you know, lean on during the whole process. Like we're all kind of scared and 
doing something brand new, it'd be nice just to have like a little bit of closure with someone who's slightly familiar that, you know, I spent the night with. And you know, just making a new friend. Like I've really been wanting to like just make tons of friends throughout this whole process. So she never showed up actually, or she just didn't exist. I think there were maybe only three of us total. So the other two roomed together and then there was just me. So I got a room to myself, which, you know, I'm not complaining, like it was nice. Um, I decided to go downstairs to the MEP um, area, the MEPS area with all the recruities, the lounge or whatever, um, so that I could try making some friends. Cause at the time I didn't know that there were only three of us. I was expecting to see several other girls and like somehow managed to make small talk or something. So I walked downstairs and there's nothing but boys. Nothing but boys. There's a pool table that has like some of the cooler guys like surrounded around it. There's um, a PS4 and an Xbox and Xbox is kind of my thing. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sit down here and hope that people talk to me without me having to initiate conversation because I'm kind of a wimp whenever it comes to being the only girl in a room full of guys and you know, just asserting myself in a manner manual way if that's a word so I just sat down and I was like hopefully like they'll let me play the game or something like you know I was just hoping for anything um I just wanted to make a few friends before the head count started so I was just sitting there and they died a few times and then they offered me the controller and I was like booyah cool I it was the apex game and I've never played a apex before so I was just like, I have no idea what they're doing, what I'm doing. And they were like, oh, okay, well, it's basically like Call of Duty. And I was like, okay, I can handle that. I can handle Call of Duty. So I start playing and um, they're like talking to me, like asking me like questions, like what's my, um, what's my job? Like what I make on my ASVAB and stuff like that. Just a bunch of little questions, where I'm from, how old I am. Everyone thought that I was like 17. Whenever I told them I turned 22 in two months, they all like lost their shit. And I was just like, yeah, I mean, genetics, what can you do? Whatever. So um, I was playing Apex and I made it like really, really far. Like I was the second person alive. Like I made it to second place, I guess, to where there was just me and one other person. And like everyone in the room at that point was like watching me play this game. And I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a badass. I had no kills. I just somehow picked a really good spot to land where um, the circle didn't close in on me whatsoever. I didn't have to move from my spot really. I mean, I looted everything and I was looking for people actively. I just didn't, I couldn't find anyone at all. And uh, no one came after me or anything. The teams just battled each other until they all killed each other. And then um, of course, like it came down to me and the last person and she like walked up and like sniped me at the last second. And as soon as she did it and I died, like everyone like erupted around me. And then at that exact moment, also, the guy who's, like, in charge of us all, he was like, okay, pause the games. It's time to, uh, sorry, I just had a little battery pop up. It's time to do the head count. And we were just like, oh, dang, like, wow, that was wild. So that was pretty cool. We, um, we did the head count type of thing. Like, uh, he sat us all down and made us watch this movie on, like, what to expect at MEPS. So that was cool. And then we all just had to get in a single file line in front of his desk, um, tell him our last name and our room number, and then he just like checked us off to make sure we were all there. And then we all went back to the room, or like some of us did, like we didn't have to be in the room till 10. So I told, I bid them farewell, and I walk up to the restaurant with my meal ticket because I still hadn't eaten dinner and it was like almost nine. So I was just like, I should probably get some food in my system. So I walk up there and I'm like kind of getting anxious again. I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna like have to sit by myself and you know, feel like a loser a little bit. I feel like everyone here knows someone or everyone's already made friends or something like that. And so I'm walking up and the lady's just like, oh, are you here for MEPS? And I was like, yeah. So we were walking into like the restaurant and we um, were coming up on this table that had three guys at it, but four chairs. And she was like, here, you can just sit here. And I was just like, okay. And she asked them like, if it was cool if I sat there and they were all like, yeah, sure. So um, that's how I made three more friends. So that was really cool. So I've got a total of like six friends at this point, maybe seven. Um, chatted with them for a long time, like um, for a pretty long time. We talked about tons of stuff, about MEPS, about our recruiters, just like, you know, everything we were going through. We ate some really good food. Like we didn't have a whole ton to choose from, from the free dinner menu, but uh, it was still pretty legit. Uh, the waitress didn't care about us very much, I guess, because she knew that she wasn't gonna like you know get much from us or whatever I'm, I'm not sure anyways after that uh we went back into our rooms um I'd added a few people on snapchat so I could keep in contact and whatnot uh 
I went ahead and showered and did all my cleaning up and everything to get ready for the next day. And uh, I'm so sorry, this video is going to be so long. Um, okay, so I showered and got, was getting ready for the next day and everything. Um, I went ahead and went to sleep. I think I was asleep by like 1130 because we had to be, I had to be up by four, downstairs by five and at breakfast by 5.15 and on the bus to go to MEPS by 5.45, which wasn't really a big deal because MEPS was like three blocks away. Like I've made that walk twice before, so it wasn't a big deal at all to walk it, but they wanted us all on the bus, so that's what we did. We all got on the bus. Um, So I went to breakfast. I was yet again worried, like, oh no, but then I saw like the familiar faces that I'd met yet the day before and I was like, okay, nice, like relief. Sat down and ate breakfast with the same guys that I ate dinner with, so that was crazy pretty chill loaded the bus um went to meps okay so we got out of the bus and they were telling us like just to and i mean this isn't like any like actual like military stuff yet like so everyone's still pretty like civilized with us and not like screaming at us or anything like that like they're all just like okay just don't talk do what you're told blah blah, blah. so we were all like super strict super on our best behavior like i was really proud to have the group of kids that i did whenever i went to meps because we all behaved so well so um they have us all line up and then they put us into groups like who's testing today and who's getting physicals and who's get testing and doing physicals and stuff like that they had these lanyards and they had like different branches on these lanyards and then like tags on them and they started they only had like five of them though and they started calling out names um and once they got to the air force lanyard they called my name and i was like oh my god like i don't know what this is but i'm so excited an air force lanyard super cool so I walk up there and then he was just like oh sorry this is just for boys and I was just like what <laughs> okay all right and like I to this day I have no idea what that was about um he just told them something about how they had to be like the first ones to go through everything or something like that I don't know I like I was friends with several of the guys who got those lanyards and uh they never really said anything about it so whatever anyway so we um we had to go through a metal detector and like put all of our stuff on a conveyor belt. This is something I cannot stress to you enough, especially if you're a girl. Um, I drove to MEPS, so I woke up a little bit earlier so I could take all my stuff and throw it in my car before I actually left the hotel to go to MEPS on the bus. And I'm so glad that I did that because all I had on me was my phone because my phone has a built-in wallet. So that makes everything so much easier. So whenever I was going up to the conveyor belt, to put my stuff in to go through um the metal detector that's all i had and like the security guard was like oh my god i wish all girls packed like this like super easy because um a lot of the kids there had to have their bags with them because they took a bus that their recruiter put them on to get to meps so they had to keep their stuff with them at all times um i mean they were able to put it in a locker room after we got through, through security but that was just like a really big thing like they had a lot of problems with people's luggage like not having any weapons or anything if you have any sort of weapon at all then you can be completely like turned away and you'll have to come back in 90 days to redo it just because you had some sort of weapon on you like it's really strict but um got through that um and then we go upstairs i went to um the air force air office and they like got my fingerprints and everything and gave me my paperwork i had my picture taken Again, um, more fingerprints, like they use fingerprints to check in and out of each station and whatnot. So I was steadily having to do my fingerprints all day. Um, I had to do the eye test and because I'm in the Air Force, I had to do several other versions of eye tests. Like I had the regular eye test. I had um, some random one. I had a depth perception eye test and colorblind eye test. So I had like four different ones and I scored perfect on all of them. So yeah, like I was so, so nervous, but so happy about that. I had to, before I took the eye test, I made sure that I put eye drops in my eyes so that they'd be fresh and like really ready to focus um, by the time I took my test. So I took it, I made flying colors on everything. Super happy about that. I was also really scared about the hearing test because that's what everyone like warns you about is the hearing test. Like I I was told by so many different like YouTubers and stuff um, that whenever you go to the hearing test, just hit the button as much as you can. Like even when you don't hear something, hit the button because there's something going there. I want to advise against that because I was in there and I had that mentality. And uh, basically what it is, it was like super weird. Like we went into this room and in the room there was another like room another tiny room like a little box that they put you in so I went into the box and it had room for like four people but there are only three of us they pull a curtain to close off each person 
and then they just have like headphones and then a little button thing that you pick up and it's like on a rack on the wall so you pick it up put it on hold the button so you can't see anyone else or anything so you don't know when they're hitting the button because the test is the same for everyone in the box so you can't like cheat but um i was like oh no i don't hear i don't hear the little noise so i was hitting it like non-stop like not like super crazy because they tell you not to hit it like like that like don't go crazy about it but I was hitting it like pretty often, even whenever I didn't hear anything. And I mean, I'm normally pretty confident with my hearing, but I was like, this is a really hard test, so I better be careful. I also had the vent to this box right above my head. So like the steady flow of air that was making noise had me really paranoid that I would miss a beep or something because of that sound interfering with what I was doing. So that was really paranoid. But I recommend not doing the button thing nonstop because it actually got on to me and it told me, um, you're pressing the button whenever there's no sound listen harder or something along those lines like it got onto me and I was just like ooh okay so I chilled out but um, I passed that test so that was great I don't think you should stress about it but my recruiter did tell me before I went to MEPS to make sure I cleaned out my ears with like warm soap and water and to make sure that I didn't wear headphones for 24 hours and that I didn't have any loud sounds or anything like that so let me tell you the day before I went to MEPS, I, um, not the day before, okay, two days before I went to MEPS, and, like, he told me to do this over, like, a four-day span, like, to wash your ears, and then, like, you know, keep your ears really safe. I was in New Mexico, and I was supposed to be in Tennessee, okay? I was in New Mexico on vacation, so I had to go through a bunch of traffic, I had to go through several airports, two airports, three, three airports, I had to be on several different planes, um, loud kids everywhere, I did wear headphones whenever I wasn't supposed to actually have on headphones um, to protect my ears. I didn't really clean my ears that well. Like every single night whenever I get out of the shower, I always like use a Q-tip and I like go around like the outside of my ear to make sure there's no buildup or anything. So I did that like I normally would. Um, I did try rubbing it with soap and water a little bit, but I feel like I didn't actually like super clean it. So I was a little paranoid about that. Like, oh no, you know, what if, but they check your ears before you go in for the hearing thing. And um, if you have dirty ears or a lot of buildup or whatever, then they send you to another room and they like put these drops in your ears and then they stuff it full of cotton balls so that it can like dissolve the earwax, I guess. And then you have to go get your ears cleaned. So that's like kind of embarrassing and it's a whole other process. So it takes a lot longer for you to finish your stuff. So I got lucky. My ears were perfectly, perfectly clean, perfectly good. I didn't have to deal with any of that and I scored well. God bless. <laughs> God bless, because I felt so bad for the kids that didn't. Um, so yeah, that passed. They um, they took they were taking blood, so I was kind of iffy on that. Like I wasn't thrilled to like have to give blood, even though I I've given blood plenty of times before. I've had my blood ran and I've like donated blood like three times. So I'm not not okay with it. It just always gives me a little bit of anxiety just because of the needle. But my doctors, all of my doctors were super sweet. They were all really nice. No one, it did not feel at any moment like anyone was trying to get me in trouble or like they were trying to uh, disqualify me or anything like that. Like everyone was super easygoing and super laid back. Um, they did encourage you to tell them anything that you hadn't told them, anything that you hadn't told your recruiter. Um, so, I mean, that's like the scary part or whatever, where, uh, you know, you can get kicked out of MEPS or whatever and have to do the whole thing over again with new information. They did encourage that, but they weren't like hounding us or anything. Like it wasn't a big deal. Everyone was pretty nice. Um, so yeah, I gave blood. That all came back good. I had to pee in a cup. And from that, they, um, they like drug tested me and made sure I wasn't pregnant and stuff like that. I was all good on all that stuff. Um, so that there was... All of that, um, they took my blood pressure to make sure that, like, I didn't have, like, really bad anxiety or anything, I guess, and that I had a normal heart rate past that. Um, we did have to sit in a, like, a classroom type of thing, and we had to refill out everything. Like, you know, whenever you go to your recruiter, and, uh, they have, like, this, all this information they have to get to from you, like, the scars you have, the piercings you have, the tattoos you have, all of that paperwork, you have to refill it out while you're at MEPS. And I mean, it's not like super hectic or anything unless you have a ton, I guess. But so it wasn't like super inconvenient, but it was also kind of annoying. So just because I've seen that paperwork so much and I've had to go through it so many times. They play like a little video for you. Um, I can't even really remember what it was about now because none of us like really cared. Nothing was like super important. Um, so yeah, I did that. And God, I'm so sorry. This video is going to be so long. Um, 
Okay, so that was pretty much all of the testing, physical testing or whatever, um, that they had to do. Then I ended up having to wait, like, 45 minutes to an hour because, uh, there were only three girls. There it was a group of, like, 30 of us, and I guess typically the groups are much larger, so we got done a lot faster than normal groups would, but, um, there were only three girls. One of the girls had only came for testing, so there were really only two of us, me and another girl at that point. And uh, the guys started going for their physical. So they had like their own doctor that was doing their physicals, but there wasn't a doctor on site yet who could do just the girls' physicals. So I had to wait like 45 minutes for another doctor to get there just to do my physical. Um, and I like, I'm not gonna lie, like they put me in like this little waiting room and people would like come and go as they'd like finish tests and stuff like that. And I, I dozed off a good bit, like twice, not gonna lie. And I mean, they had like a TV playing like the news channel and stuff like that. Like it wasn't anything scary. And like I said, all of the people there, they were all super nice and super chill. And like, they just talked to me like normal humans would. So that was cool. Um, I got in to do the physical. I had to do the duck walk and then like motion arm motions and uh, just like testing my flexibility and how well my motor skills are and stuff like that. And we, we did everything like super fast. Like all of those little things I had to do. It all went by super fast because um, it was just me and this girl and we both did them at the same time in our underwear. Um, yeah, so that was easy. Um, I scored really well on that too. And then we went in one at a time to do the actual physical, which is where he like looks at the vagina and then I like lift up a butt cheek and he looks at the butt and uh, he like felt me for breast cancer and uh, he listened to my breathing and my digestion. And by that time, like, I hadn't eaten since 5 o'clock that morning, and it was, like, going on. We finished pretty early, so it wasn't bad, but it had been a few hours, and I was already starving again. So he could hear my stomach rumbling, so he made jokes about that. Um, and I also went into the- and I also had a woman in there with me, and she was, like, the one instructing me to do everything, because since I had a, a male doctor, they, she had to be in there. So she was the one instructing me to do everything and he was just kind of looking just to make sure and I mean it wasn't weird and it wasn't creepy like it seemed like he felt just as awkward having to do it as I did having to have it done you know like he didn't make it a big deal or anything so that was really cool so that was all of that um I think that I really finished everything by like 10 45 in the morning and normally they don't get done until like five o'clock or four o'clock you know stuff like that so super lucky but I mean I also didn't have to take any paper test or anything so I don't know if that would be factored in or not probably not but um so once I finished the physical and everything I'd officially cleared everything medically I went to have an interview done with a lady um and she just like she just asked me a few basic questions um I can't really remember what any of them were now but she was an older lady and she was really chill. Like she made jokes and stuff. And um, the guys around her, like in different cubicles, they were joking about um, how wine causes cancer if you drink more than two bottles a week or something like that. I don't know, it was crazy, but it was really fun. And uh, like, she was chill, it, it wasn't a big deal. And I finished up with her and I guess I'd passed the interview. Um, it's nothing to stress about, I promise. Like it's not even anything weird. Um, she She just asked like, if I had any like traffic violations or anything like that, just random little things like that. Went back into the Air Force office and that's whenever I had to lift the weights because apparently how much weight you can lift depends on what jobs you're qualified for. So I lifted the weights and uh, the first time I did it, I got 70, but I really wanted bio management or some job like that. And in order to get that, I had to lift 80. So I did, I think, I think it was 80. So I did it again and I lifted like 90. On my second try so that one that wasn't bad but the machine that they had me use was like super outdated and you had to like squat down really far and then like push up on it but it was so awkwardly placed and everything like there's no way that was healthy to do for my body um i did not have good form doing it just because of how it was placed like it was just i do not recommend it was awful and it was really hard but um yeah so i did that they sat me down they um they told me about my contract kind of, or like while you're in the interview is whenever you really go over your contract, like just the, how many years you want to do and whatnot. So they, um, they asked for the jobs that I had picked out and I recommend whenever you go in and have your jobs, have the code for your job 
and the name. That's what I did. Like, I didn't know which one they would want, so I wrote down both on a little piece of paper that I kept tucked in my phone case that whole day until then whenever they asked for it. So I read off the um, IDs and he told me like which ones I was and wasn't qualified for, but I got pretty much all of them actually. So that was easy enough. Um, he like put all of those jobs on my actual contract or something along those lines, like in my official files and uh, then sent it to my recruiter. Okay, so that went past and then it was time for lunch because um, they had they have different sets of times for swearing in. Like one was at 1030 and I just barely missed that. So I didn't get to swear in at 1030 in the morning. So I had to wait for the one o'clock one. So I went out and uh, they had lunch ready for us. So we went into the separate room where they were serving us lunch and there was like boxes, like a bunch of different boxes that had meals in them. And you couldn't see what was inside the boxes, but it told you like if it was chicken, ham, turkey, you know, that kind of thing. I went with turkey and uh, I just kind of sat down like in the middle of people um, at this really long table. And I opened the box and it was like a pretty good sized sub that was a turkey sub. It had a banana, a chocolate chip, cookie, and um, then you had like a selection of drinks you could pick from and I just grabbed a bottle of water. But uh, it was really good, it tasted good, it filled me up. I didn't eat the entire sub. And um, I made some more friends during that lunch time. Like I sat next to some different people and I made friends with them. I made like some really solid bonds that I'm like super thankful for because that was sweet. Um, yeah, so I just basically, they let me have my phone back after that because you can have it like in a certain area of MEPS just not during the medical stuff. So I got my phone back and I basically just like ate lunch and played on my phone until one o'clock and whenever they took us into another room that looked kind of like a classroom. And by that time there were only like 12 of us. Like we started out with almost 30 and then there were only 12. And I mean there's different reasons for that. Like some people, um, maybe they finished earlier and they got to swear in at 10.30 instead of one. Or like maybe they were disqualified because of this or that. Maybe they were held back because of this or that. Or maybe they were only there for the paper testing or something like that or some sort of like updated testing something um so there were only 12 of us um this guy came in and he like told us what we were going to be doing and he was like younger he was a marine who was about my age so he like wasn't thrilled that he had to do it and he like kind of joked around a little bit and like you could tell that he was just like whatever type of thing so he told us what we'd be doing and when we'd be doing it and what to expect so uh we hung out in that room for a few more minutes and then it was like officially swearing in time so we went to another separate room that had like all the flags on it and the podium and he like lined us all up um according to height and everything and just what looked neatest and there were two guys that were going into the reserves and the rest of us were all going active so the two reserve guys had to do their pledge first and then we all did our pledge afterwards and uh so that was that was something else um the actual main guy came in to like give us our oath and everything and we had to like raise our hands and actually my mom was sick so she couldn't be there but one of the guys one of the army guys that was like in charge of i think it was a recruiter one of the recruiters he um he took my phone for me and actually recorded the whole thing for me so i was super thankful for that i got it on camera i'm gonna try throwing it into this video but i may not be able to because this is almost 30 minutes long and i'm so sorry maybe i can like redo this and sum it up somewhere but um, yeah, so I swore in, I was officially in the Air Force. Um, we all messed around and took a bunch of pictures. We took a group picture, we took individual pictures. I helped people take pictures. Finished all that, went back into the classrooms type thing. And then the guy, um, he had us come up one at a time to scan our fingerprints one last time uh, and look over our contracts, make sure everything on it was right. It was, we were good to go home, so. Yeah, I was rushing really hard to get all of that information out for you guys. And I hope that it helps. And I hope that um, it helps calm you down about MEPS. Because I know that everyone's MEPS experience is like different. And like the places alone look different. Just the facilities and whatnot. But for me, honestly, it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't anything to be paranoid about. And like, just don't, don't kill yourself stressing about it. I promise it's not worth it.